It could be radiation, but could it be only subtle energy? And we are very interested in how subtle energy can be detected by a material. In our time, everybody is sure that weather on the planet is determined by cyclones and anticyclones. We accept the weatherman's daily forecasts as inevitable. Actually, we are waiting for water to make its appearance. Evaporating and turning into whimsical clouds and towering thunderheads, it creates the architectonics of the sky. The countless shades of sunrise and sunset, the rainbows that shoot across the sky, all of them result from the refraction of light rays by the moisture in the atmosphere. Clouds carry this moisture over great distances, and it spills down as rain. Rain, hail, snow, and mist, winds and storms, gales and hurricanes, all of these complex processes depend on water's mood. We try to second guess how it is going to behave, and where on the earth it will bestow its favors, and where it will unleash its wrath. The most we can do is to observe these processes from space, but only observe them. But how alluring the thought is of subjugating the weather. What a sweet bait that is for human vanity. Many peoples have preserved the practice of influencing weather and atmospheric phenomena. These rituals are carefully passed down, unchanged from generation to generation. If my tributes have been convincing enough, if I have chosen the right time and the right place, and have recited the mantras correctly, and from a pure heart, then the Lord of the water gives us water. We do not place much trust in such actions, which may be met with a smile these days. Could it be that just one man, not some huge modern laboratory with the latest technologies, but just a person could influence a natural process solely by the force of his desire? And there was outdoor wedding outside a museum in Ontario. And, um, well, we didn't bring umbrellas, but some people did. And the sky was all overcast, and the rain started to come. That was half an hour before the wedding. And it started to rain, all the umbrellas went up. And so I and three students, two other students, said, okay, let's meditate for, uh, for um, better weather. Within a minute, an opening in the clouds came and the sun just shone right down in this area only not all over just shone right down this area by the summer of 1991 Israel had no rain for two years the water in the country's only freshwater lake Lake Kinneret had fallen 15 centimeters below the critical level then 10,000 Israelis gathered at the Wailing Wall to pray for rain. On the third day, rain came down on the country in torrents. Many people explain this fact as simple coincidence. Belief in coincidence is neither scientific nor religious. From a scientific point of view, there is scientific determinism, while from a religious standpoint, there are things that are done, which have an influence on the outcome. Coincidence is a way in which people try to escape bearing any responsibility. Just as the cry of a bird in the mountains can cause a powerful avalanche or the motion of a butterfly's wing can change the weather over an entire continent, likewise people can launch global processes solely by the power of their thought. And that is no exaggeration. Not a single scientist who is familiar with systems theory doubts that. 
It is entirely a question of waiting for a moment when the system is in a state of instability. In a phase of instability, the notion of thought alone is sufficient for the system to start to change. I do not always see it when my own mistake or sin comes back to me in another guise, although, essentially, it is a single unit. Whatever it is that I did wrong returns to me, not as punishment, but as a result. With all the abundancy of water on the planet, less than 1% of it is available fresh water. This supply has been practically unchanged in the course of human history, while the population has been constantly growing. The world has never seen that many people as there is on the planet today, six and a half billion. But even now, there would have been enough fresh water for everybody if it were not for the severe attack of the human civilization. Look, imagine, if there will simply not be any water, that it will go away deep underground. Who shall give you water? Which will spout freely from the ground and be easy for you to reach. Today, more than a billion people of the earth lack access to safe drinking water. Over five million people, half of them children, die for this reason each year. This is ten times more than perish in wars each year. If this problem is left unsolved, water may become a source of international conflicts in the 21st century. Already now, it is gradually attaining the status of a basic resource which is beginning to figure in the political dialogue among countries and peoples. See, we talk a lot about an upcoming oil crisis because we will run out of oil. But I think it is even more important that we worry about the water, that we don't run into a water crisis. According to UN data, around 10 million tons of oil annually pours into the world ocean. Along the U.S. Atlantic coast are buried 90,000 containers of radioactive waste with 100 kilocuries of activity, while the European part has 500 kilocuries. Countries with sea access dump industrial, construction, and radioactive waste into the ocean. As it is dumped and descends through a column of water, some of the polluting substances dissolve and change not only the quality of the water, but also its memory. The ocean is also still capable of erasing these memories because of its salinity. But nonetheless, the dilution effect is there. It also needs to be discussed and studied. Because at very great levels of dilution, Sometimes the memory begins to have even a stronger influence than at slight, so to speak, levels of dilution with high concentrations. We have to pay attention to this. This is a very difficult period of our planetary existence. Today, we've already plowed up all the lands possible, and we've lost 33% of our green covering and half the plankton in the ocean. So the problem might seem to be far off, but there is water everywhere. In the past year, the temperature of the cold deep sea waters under the Gulf Stream fell by one degree. In the past nine years, the rate of melting of Greenland's iceberg has tripled. In the past 30 years, the destructive force of hurricanes has doubled. The number of natural disasters is rising. In the decade from 1973 through 1982, 1,500 disasters occurred worldwide. In 1983-1992, there were 3,500. In 1993 to 2002, there were 6,000. 226,000 people died or disappeared during the December 2004 tsunami in Southeast Asia, while half a million were left homeless. <laughs> 